Okay, today we're looking at different generations of dot matrix controller boards that were used um, by Data East, Sega, and Stern Pinball. Um, I have here a dot matrix controller out of a Ripley's, believe it or not, that I had to repair. Um, this had a problem with U2 over here. See if I can zoom in on it a little bit, which is a 74LS245. And what happened was it this component received uh, some acid damage from the CPU board for the machine it was installed in um, because the batteries leaked, which is why you have to get the batteries off your CPU board if you haven't done so yet. Um, here's the uh, original component down here and you can see there focuses in you can see these pins right here they're all corroded and it damaged the board so the board needed to be cleaned up and a new um, uh, 74 LS 245 installed so to test this board, I've actually put it inside a Rocky and Bullwinkle pinball. And you can see here, the back glass is out, but uh, you can see the blue cabinet and you can see the lion and uh, Bullwinkle's arm here, um, up here. Okay. And um, the point of this is to show how. Um, Data East, Sega, and Stern pretty much use the same board uh, for almost 12, over 12 years. Um, the board that normally goes in here is this board right here. And you can see it looks different than the uh, board out of the Ripley's. And um, but as you can see, it's the same form factor, and boards are the same sizes. And uh, I just pulled this board out and popped in the the repaired board. Um, it uses they both use a 6809 CPU, which is here, and uh, they both use a 27040 ROM. Yeah, here's the Ripley's ROM right here. And um, I pulled that out and I put the Rocky and Bullwinkle ROM in. And um, this board basically has a part number on it of 520 5055, and this is a dash 01. Um, and this one here, as you see, it says it's 520 5055 dash 00, but it's a Rev E board where you can see they've done a lot more integration uh, on this board. For all intents and purposes, these two boards are the same. And Data East started using this board with Lethal, Lethal Weapon 3 in uh, about 1993, I believe, June at time frame. And they modified this board into this form with the integration at about 2000 or 2001. I don't remember exactly when. And they used this board all the way until the last um, White Star based game, which was uh, NASCAR in 2005. Um, the good news is that this board is pretty ubiquitous and pretty easy to come by. So if you have a problem with a board with your display and you need another display board, and getting one of these to replace in, say, your old Day to East game, like what this is, is pretty easy to do. So, just to show that these are plug and play replacements, I've pulled this board out. I pulled the ROM from this board. I've installed it in here. And now, what I'm going to do is we're going to turn this machine on and we're going to um, fire it up and show that it works just fine. And the 
let's see. I'm going to shut the light because it will probably be a little bit easier to see the display without the glare. And uh, let's turn the game on. And there it is. Display, CPU, and it's in the track mode and it's working just fine. And if I go into diagnostics, and I get to the display test, and you see the display test is running. All the vertical lines, all the horizontal lines, all the inverse vertical lines, all the inverse horizontal lines, and then the hatching pattern, which doesn't come out very well in the video, and then it just repeats. So, there you see, this display board is completely compatible going all the way back. This was like the, th Rocky and Bullwinkle was like the third game, I believe, that used this display board. The first was Lethal Weapon, and then the second was Star Wars, and then this was th the third one. So, um... And like I said, this board was used all the way up until NASCAR. So, if you need a new display board for your Data E Sega or uh, early Stern dot matrix, you can um, use any one of these uh, older or new model versions of this board. Okay, thanks.